Hey boys, it's Arm Nan. Today, we're gonna be doing something I've never done before. We are gonna be going over the best helicopters for PVPing in Grand Theft Auto Online in 2022. Now, there's gonna be some helicopters on here that are extremely offensive oriented, that are really just good for killing people. And there's also gonna be some helicopters on here that are really, really offensively gifted, but they're also really good in some other ways as well that will definitely give you an advantage when you're PVPing. Anyway, guys, let's get started with number five. All right, guys. So in number five, we have the Valkyrie. So the Valkyrie is kind of like the FH-1 Hunter. However, it is the FH-1 Hunter before the FH-1 Hunter ever existed. Now that's only true in some ways because as the pilot of this vehicle, you're actually not in control of any sort of weapons. So you pretty much are going to have to rely on having three separate passengers to actually deliver the pain to your enemies with this helicopter. So as a solo PVP vehicle, the Valkyrie is not that good. However, However, if you do have a passenger, they get access to that little gun that you can see on the bottom of the helicopter there. And it is a 30 millimeter auto cannon grenade launcher. It's very, very good at killing players. It's actually just as good as the FH-1 Hunter's gunner cannon. I don't know that it has all the range of the FH-1 Hunter's, but it is the same gun essentially. Now, if you can manage to find two other players to hop in this thing with you, either of them will get access to one of the two minigun turrets that you can see on the sides of this thing, which deal a pretty, pretty good amount of damage. These things kill really, really quickly, and they're also very, very accurate. Now, unfortunately, I can't really demonstrate this for you guys because I don't have a person to fly this vehicle for me. Now, unfortunately, the Valkyrie is almost obsolete these days in Grand Theft Auto Online because of other helicopters that I have already mentioned to you guys, namely the FH-1 Hunter. Pretty much blows this thing out of the water completely and there's a few other helicopters that are just a lot better than this thing. Another downfall of this is it is not very armored however it does have such an arsenal of weapons that if you can manage to find the guys to actually operate them this thing is a gunship. It is a total gunship. You can destroy pretty much anyone at least for a bit until you get hit with a couple explosive sniper shots. Overall the Valkyrie is a decent helicopter. I don't know that I would recommend picking this one up but it is a pretty gifted offensive helicopter in GTA Online. Anyway, guys, that is it for number five. Let's move on to number four. All right, guys, the next helicopter that I have for you is the Savage. Now, this thing, when it came out, was an absolute beast. However, these days in GTA Online, there are definitely some better helicopters that you can get to PvP players, but the Savage can actually hold its own surprisingly well. Now, the Savage is a four-seater, so you can have a pilot, a co-pilot, and two players within the main hold there, one on each side. Now, when you do have passengers in here, they can both actually fire machine guns or sniper rifles whatever you have out of the sides of this thing with the exception of rpgs and like the minigun you can't fire those out of the sides it's a real shame now the savage is equipped with some pretty good armament the main cannon on this thing is the exact same as the main cannon that is on the hydra and if you know anything about the hydra's main cannon well So clearly the main cannon is a pretty deadly feature on the Savage. Not to mention the missiles are actually homing missiles, or you can of course turn the homing off on them, and they are completely spammable. There is no delay. You can keep shooting these missiles as long as you want to, and it will never run out. So offensively, this thing's weapons are pretty damn good. They might not be the best, they may be a little outdated, but you can definitely do a lot of damage with these things. There's no doubt about it. Now the Savage is also a tiny, tiny bit armored. This thing can usually take one RPG while you are flying it. It really depends on the day though, because I have been one shot out of this thing, but I've also had it where I've actually survived an RPG shot and been able to keep flying. And I do believe that this thing can actually take two homing launchers before it actually blows up, which of course is better than average, but still not that great. Really, this thing's main feature is that it has the explosive auto cannon like the Hydra, but on a helicopter instead of on a jet. That is really this thing thing's actual best feature. There's nothing really else that's that great about it. I've got some friends who use the Savage occasionally when we PvP other players, and it does pretty well, I must say. It really does. It, it actually holds its own surprisingly well. Now, it will not be one of those vehicles that's going to last forever in a fight because, unfortunately, it does take damage pretty quickly. Enough heavy sniper shots in this thing will go down in pretty much no time. But for the time that it is up, you can 
absolutely shred anybody who you are fighting against so long as they don't have an explosive sniper. If they do, then you're at a slight disadvantage, but you'll probably still get a couple kills on them with this thing. Overall, the Savage is a great helicopter. I really, really love this thing. I don't use it nearly enough because some of the other helicopters that are going to be ahead of it on this list are just a little bit better, but for what it is, it's a pretty good helicopter. Anyway, guys, that is it for number four. Let's move on to number three. All right, guys, so the next helicopter that we have is one of the most convenient vehicles in all of Grand Theft Auto Online. Of course, I'm talking about the Sparrow. As you guys can see, simply go into the interaction menu, go to services, go to the Kasaka, and request the Sparrow. And there it is, right there. This thing spawns pretty much as close as humanly possible to you, which is absolutely great. Makes it very, very useful for being a PvP vehicle because you can get it so damn quickly. Now, convenience is a huge part of the Sparrow's ability when it comes to PvPing. Simply being able to spawn it in as close as possible to you is actually a huge, huge feature because obviously if you're fighting somebody and you need some support from an aircraft, you can really, really quickly get the Sparrow in and you can get involved pretty quick with this thing. Now, the Sparrow is also equipable with either machine guns or rockets. And obviously, I mean, well, we're not idiots here. So rockets are, rockets are a lot better. Uh, the machine guns probably cool too, but I mean, man, we're like, look at this. I mean, these rockets are insane. Like, so the Sparrow actually has rapid fire rockets, very, very similar to the Savage. You can absolutely spam fire these things and it makes no difference. They will just keep going. And the other thing about the Sparrow is you actually have infinite rockets, which is a very, very nice feature, especially for a helicopter that is so convenient to spawn. Now, another great feature about the Sparrow is that this is actually the literal fastest helicopter in the entire game. So being able to spawn it in in super Super close proximity to you, having the rockets, and then also being the fastest helicopter in the game, that's quite a combo. Now, of course, the Sparrow does also have its trade-offs, the main one being that it is completely piss weak. It's also only a two-seater, and there is really little to no protection for the actual pilot or the co-pilot of this vehicle, because obviously, I mean, it's literally like a glass box, so you can get sniped out of this thing like it's nothing. But at the same time, of course, there had to be some sort of downside to this helicopter, because if it was all just good, then I mean, you know, it would just be ridiculously overpowered. Now, the only thing with the Sparrow that I don't ever see people talking about is just how much money this thing actually costs to buy. Now, in order to get the Sparrow, you actually need to own a Kasatka. And to own a Kasatka is $2.2 million. And then the Sparrow costs $1.8 million on top of that, making this thing $4 million. Now, that is actually a pretty steep price in GTA Online, especially considering that the helicopters ahead of this thing are roughly around the same price and to be honest they're kind of better helicopters i like the sparrow as much as anybody however it is really really expensive to actually get it which is unfortunate but i must say the convenience features of it make it pretty worth it to actually spend that sort of money on it and you can't really go wrong with it obviously it's pretty small it's pretty maneuverable you can weave in and out of buildings really easily overall it is just a great helicopter however the price tag is a tiny bit steep let's not lie anyway guys let's move on to number two all right guys at number two we have the most offensive oriented helicopter in the entire game which is of course the fh1 hunter this thing is absolutely loaded to the teeth everything that you can possibly need to try to kill people in gta as the pilot of this vehicle you get access to either barrage missiles or homing missiles now the barrage fires a rapid succession of seven missiles which can absolutely i mean you guys just saw what i did there these things are very, very deadly. You can shred people with these things. Killing ground targets with the barrage is very, very easy. It is pretty much my favorite thing to do in the FH-1 Hunter if I'm ever fighting against a griefer or something like that. I will whip out the FH-1 Hunter and absolutely nail them with the barrage. Now, the barrage is actually also pretty good for taking out enemy aircraft because obviously if they're flying towards you at a lower angle or something like that, you can kind of predict where they're going to fly with the missiles and hopefully they'll fly into them because there are so many. Of course, it also does have the homing missiles, which you can lock onto enemy aircraft or vehicles if you need to. And these things aren't the best homing missiles, but they are pretty darn good. They're as good as any other vehicle that has had homing missiles on this list, so they're not bad at all. Of course, you can also drop bombs out of the bottom of this thing, and obviously you can make anyone who is below you's life a lot more miserable with the bombs and with all the other armaments that this 
helicopter actually has. We haven't even gone over the most overpowered thing about the Hunter yet though, and that is the passenger's weaponry, namely the 30 millimeter auto cannon. When I say something is disgustingly unfair and disgustingly overpowered, the 30 millimeter auto cannon is exactly what I'm talking about. The amount of salty tryhard griefers that I have destroyed being in the gunner seat of an FH-1 Hunter is, it must be in the hundreds. It has to be. I have absolutely shredded so many griefers with the auto cannon on the bottom of this thing as the passenger while one of my friends has flown me around. The Hunter is absolutely gross. The auto cannon on this kills people with more efficiency than any other vehicle in the game, any other weapon in the game. It, it absolutely shreds. There is no downside to the cannon on that thing other than the range is a little bit low, but if it was any higher, this vehicle would just be completely unstoppable. Now, usually you can actually get griefers or whoever you're fighting into a spawn loop using the auto cannon on the bottom of this thing, because by the time they respawn, you've already killed them. So they don't even have a chance to get a homing launcher off at you or an RPG or an explosive heavy sniper shot. This thing is actually disgusting. It's so overpowered. And I haven't even mentioned the armor of it yet either. This thing, I believe, can take three homing launchers before it will actually blow up, which is pretty damn good for a helicopter. Overall, the Hunter is just a very, very good helicopter. You really can't beat this thing. It is so damn good. Albeit, you pretty much need somebody with you to actually man the auto cannon to really get the most out of this thing. But if you have that person, man, you guys are going to have a field day with whoever you're killing. The Hunter is a absolutely goaded helicopter. I would highly recommend picking this thing up, guys, if you don't have one already. With that being said, let's move on to the best helicopter in the entire game for PvPing and, well, the best helicopter in the entire game. All right, guys, and at number one, we of course have the Akula. Now, if you guys know anything about the Akula, you know why it is super, super good. So to begin with, the Akula is very, very well armed, very similar to the FH-1 Hunter. However, it is just a little bit worse in a few different areas. To start off with, the gunner's cannons are not as good. They are actually machine guns. They have no explosive function to them whatsoever. As the pilot, you get the same features with the bombs, which you can of course drop on your opponents. Now the Akula is interesting because there is a point where you will have to make a choice when you're upgrading this thing. You can either equip it with homing missiles like I have or you can equip it with a four missile barrage. Kind of similar to the Hunter just with three less missiles that it shoots which is a little bit unfortunate to be honest. Of course you can equip it with dual machine guns that are operated by the pilot and in addition to the gunner's double machine gun cannon you can put down some pretty good fire with just this by itself. However the homing missiles are definitely the better option if you try to kill people, that's for sure. The homing missiles on this are also completely rapid fire. All you have to do on PC at least is hold down the space bar. On console, I would assume whatever your shoot key is, just hold it down and they will shoot as fast as they possibly can. Here are the features that make this thing a little bit better than the FH-1 Hunter. The Akula is actually the second fastest helicopter in the entire game, just after the Sparrow, of course. In addition to that, the Akula also can seat four players inside of it, which is pretty good if you're moving around with a squad. You can, of course, bring four people around with you. The Akula also has one more trick up its sleeve, and that is stealth mode. If I press H on keyboard, I fold away my machine guns, and I lose my ability to shoot missiles out of this vehicle. Hmm. What this does is makes it so that I and the gunner cannot actually shoot at anybody, which sounds like a disadvantage. However, I am completely removed from every single player in the entire session's minimap and their big map. They cannot find me when I'm in stealth mode in the Akula. So if you're trying to get the jump on somebody, you can pull up to them in the Akula in stealth mode and they will have no idea unless they can actually see you with their own two eyes. And of course, if you get that close to them, you can really quickly hop out of stealth mode and you can start launching your missiles, do whatever you need to do to kill them. Your gunner, of course, can start shooting the machine guns at them. You basically have got them killed the first time. And then from the first time you've got them killed, every time they respawn, you can go off of the radar again, get over to them and continue killing them as soon as they're within range. Then go back into stealth mode again and go away to another location. Of course, the Akula also has pretty good armor. It has the exact same armor as the 
FH-100 as a matter of fact. It can take three homing launchers and I believe two RPGs before it actually blows up, as well as a handful of heavy sniper explosive rounds as well. Overall, the Akula is just the absolute goaded PvP helicopter. This thing absolutely shreds. There's literally no real downfall to this thing other than the gunner's cannon is a bit piss weak. But other than that, there's literally nothing wrong with this helicopter. And I would say that the stealth mode that it has definitely makes up for what it lacks in firepower. So there you have it, guys. That is the number one best helicopter for PvPing in Grand Theft Auto Online. Anyway, guys, there you have it. Those are the five best helicopters for PvPing in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now, I can hear a few of you saying in my mind, where's the buzzard? The reason the buzzard is not here is because honestly, it's okay for PvP, but the Sparrow is just better in every single way. And I felt like the Valkyrie is more offensively gifted than the buzzard itself. So that's why I put the Valkyrie on instead of the buzzard. Just wanted to explain that before we end the video. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, leave a like, if not dislike, subscribe if you guys are new, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.